Why hello everybody, so welcome to another review as read. Today uh, we'll be talking about Betrayal, Blood for the Blood God by Aaron Dubinsky Bolden. Now this is part of the Horus Heresy series by Black Library. Um, and if you know anything about the Warhammer 40,000 universe, this is before, uh, in the 30th millennium of that history. And this is um, part of book 26, I believe. No, we're book 24 of the series. So there's a lot of books before this. Um, but I'll also be reviewing this as a standalone book. So, what's this book about? This book is after the invasion of Ultima by Copyron and Erebus. And this one focuses more on what Loga is doing. Loga being the primarch of the word bearers, the word bearers and um, his relationship and the plans he has for Angron, the leader of the world eaters. And this story is basically more focused on Angron. Um, and the plans he has, and really this book can also be called The Ascension of Angron, so the World Eater's Primark. So that's what the book is about. And so let's first go into the cons of the book. Um, the cons of the book, basically I would say, is that to really, really experience the true facet of this book, you and I'll come out and say right now, this is one of my top 10 favorite books to read. It's absolutely wonderful. Um, but to really, really enjoy it, you need to read a lot of the... You need to know a lot of the past history and the little nuances. Example, when I was reading this, um, there's an audio book called The Butcher's Nails. The Butcher's Nails being the machine that is inside his brain, um, Angron's brain, that causes him to be very... basically a crazy killer. And... I didn't get a lot of the nuances, like example they were talking about the butcher's nails and what the nails are and how they affect the brain. And you actually have to hear the butcher's nails audiobook to really understand some of the references they were making. And on top of that, you got all the references um, of the rest of the 23 books before that. And they don't, you don't necessarily need to know those things, but definitely if you don't know, it kind of takes away from... Um, you know, it's like knowing the overall story of a biography of a person, but not knowing like the little Easter egg details, like actually that joke meant this, you know what I mean? So, you definitely need prior knowledge to really get the feel for this book to become like a top 10 book for you, I feel. Um, and as a book on itself, without any knowledge of one of 8,000, I would say... It's definitely still a good book, but it's not a great book. So that's really, I would say, the biggest con of the book, that you need prior knowledge to truly appreciate the book. But the writing is fantastic. And so, since I've gone into it, um, let's go into the pros of the book, which are quite a few. The first thing is, it's so unique. Now, you know, if you're looking at, like I said, I'm looking at this, if you're looking at this as a um, standalone book, and you know nothing about Warhammer 4000, you always got the genetic warriors who are which are what the space marines and primarchs are who are very orderly they fight in a mass army formations and all that but this book like i say focuses on the world eaters which is angron's um space marine legion which are just basically berserkers and they fight in this fashion which is almost doesn't it doesn't make sense you know they just charge literally powered by the nails which is the machines in their head that cause them to go crazy and just want to have a rage kill so it's so unique to see how, even though they're spending these great warriors like water, how the leader just keeps allowing it to happen because he either doesn't care or he just can't control his own head because he's always in pain. Um, so from that aspect of an army, a, a military book, it's so unique to hear why, um, example, he uses his legions, his space marines in this way. And sad, strangely to say, once you hear his reasons, you kind of, you don't agree with it, but then again, you don't fault him for the situation that he is in. And on top of that, the writing is amazing. Um, to give one little example, Angron is in pain all the time. And many times, you would just say, like, in, I would feel most authors, in fact, if I were doing writing a book, I would put that he snarled, you know. But in this book, he actually puts in the sound effect like example he'll put that he's in pain and he makes the sound h-n-n-g you know like that kind of thing you know it just 
it strangely to say it really adds to the character especially if you heard the audiobook too and he does this a lot because he's always grinding his teeth in pain um and on top of that the writing causes this amazing tension when they're fighting because like i said the world eaters when they fight they're not fighting in an orderly fashion they are charging and they often get caught in traps especially against the ultramarines which are the traditional you know straight line army and all that so there's a lot of tension like you keep you keep thinking don't push any further and you have the lead the um equi which to angron which is like a second leader in a way the person just below the top and he keeps he knows he shouldn't charge but he can't control himself he tries to keep the army in place but they charge forward anyway so there's this tension like don't do it don't do it and they do it and from the several um like the, they invade several worlds in the book um mo- mostly uh, most of it's on two planets but the, they invade and you would think that because of the way they fight it would be pretty boring like oh they invaded again drop pods whatever but in both books they actually focus on different things and yet the tension is still there it doesn't get stale you know it's not like oh look another trap they fell into the kind of thing so there's amazing tension to the writing that is even though they're doing the same thing it feels different and it keeps you involved in the book um and to tell you how much i like this book i am not kidding i never had a book where literally i'm falling asleep i'm literally tired because i usually read before i you know go to sleep i had one eye closed i was so tired one eye was closed already and i still continued to read the book just to find out, oh my god what's happening on the next page i'm not kidding and uh, because you're so tired, you will read and then you turn the page, and then you, because you're so tired, you don't remember what the last two pages were. Then you reread it. That's how much this book, writing and story, is so amazing. Um, because every like I said, if you know the, you read all the prior books and you hear the audio book, like every little thing has a little nuance, like a, almost like an Easter egg. It makes you want to continue reading and find out. Oh my God, what's going to happen? Next? Oh, they charge. Uh, did they, did this happen? You know, and you, on top they got titans and the whole thing is just so fantastically written and the last point is personal one because i can relate i will feel to i feel the best written um primark is probably loga which is the word bearers because unlike the rest which have very strong one-sided almost like some angron is very all but the rage although he's all the characters in this book are very well flushed out if you look at the one more forty thousand universe each of the Primarchs have this um, trait they have, you know. Whereas Loga is represented most human, like he's superhuman, but the way he thinks is that he's, uh, he has so many flaws, but he tries to make the best of it. For example, he's now the bearer of the word for the Chaos Gods, but yet at the same time, he doesn't trust them. So you can see he's always had this battle in his head, like should he do this, should he do that. So on top of that, to me, representation of Loga just trying to process everything in his head the reasonings why also helps the book a lot like i say so yeah the characters also very well flushed out in this book so um that's about it in conclusion you really really if you want to experience this book as fantastic as it is um you need to go and check out the the rest of the history of the place um of the horse heresy i mean best if you can read it and get the audiobook the butcher's nails especially if not, um, well, it's still a good book regardless if you knew nothing. But definitely you will, it would, a lot of the little details will fly over your head. Um, so, yeah, in conclusion, that's it. If you can, try to read up. If not, still a good book to read. Um, definitely recommend it. Um, but if I would say that you did not have prior knowledge, maybe you might want to read Fallgrim instead. Fallgrim read without the prior knowledge is still a fantastic book to read because it was one of the first few books i think it's the fourth book i think um Fulgrim was no fifth book so yeah that one at the point there was still a, this beginning of the war so there was not so much backstory in a way so if you can't i would if you can't read the whole series i would suggest Fulgrim. if not if you do and you know a lot about warmer 40,000 and the horror history especially you must read the betrayer it is fantastic. Thank you very much. Till next word.